Roseanne Barr isn't screaming about January 6th and stolen elections because she believes it. She's doing it because there's a couple few dollars in it for her. Because the first thing President Trump did, God bless that man, and I love him, and everybody knows it. I love him more now than I ever loved him, and I loved him pretty damn good. He drove me out in a Bentley when I did my second HBO special at Trump Palace in um, Atlantic City, if you've seen it. He's always been a good friend and a good man. And to me, and to a lot of other people. And, uh, what's I saying? <laughs> I'm old. I forget what I'm saying. She can forget what she's talking about because no one cares. As long as it sounds like a bunch of crazed football fans reacting to her shtick instead of noticing that they're being robbed of their money and their freedom. She's doing her job. If Vice President Harris were to win this election, would you accept that result? No, no. I'm not going to move to another continent, but just watch out, man. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. So. And what, if, if Trump were to win the election, would you accept that result? Yes. Absolutely. Why would you accept that and not the other? When he was in office for the four years, the economy was doing great. They've successfully made accepting the validity of the results of the election to be based on whether or not they liked it when Trump was in office, without a hint of introspection. See if you can tell what specific issues this supporter is concerned about, and if it's more coherent than what Trump tells him to think. You know, put up a wall. Yeah, he had that in check. We didn't give money away like this uh, Paris deal. That's a joke. You know, the climate deal. Uh, climate deal is a joke. You know, the, you pay money to, for people to talk to God and they can control the weather. And nobody can do that. That's just rip off money. All these wars that we just had, that was all under buying. But we didn't have any wars, right? Uh, no, the wars that took place, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, um, uh, Israel and Gaza, they got the money. But that just happened now, but that didn't happen because, to, did it? I mean, money, money talks, money talks. You give money to Iran, that's what they did. That's what they showed they did. Us pulling out of Af Afghanistan back in the day, all those soldiers getting killed. They never, Biden doesn't know what's going on. And those are reasons for him to reject the outcome of the election. But only if his guy loses. If Trump wins, will you accept that result? Yes. If Vice President Harris wins, will you accept that result? No. <laughs> No, because I won't believe it's possible. I would have believed, look, if Hillary won, I would have believed it. She had her support, and she was a first lady, and she was a senator, and she was secretary of state. No, I, I do not believe, you know, I do not believe America is a country full of stupid people. I don't believe people can be stupid enough en masse to vote for Harris because she's a fraud. I, I, I won't accept it. This is my 89th Trump rally. I think if it's a fair and honest election, Trump is going to beat Reagan's record. He's going to take all 50 states. But I'm cynical. It remains to be seen. This election could be stolen, too. <laughs> you know, Biden was never really the president, and she won't be the president either. This is Barack Obama running for his fourth term as the puppet master behind the scenes. Harris is useless. Kamala's useless. But, but can I tell a little interesting story? I mean, it's Kamala, right? Kamala, something like that. Kamala. <laughs> Kamala, like the wrestler. He called himself Kamala. It was like a half a second there when his brain told him that he's being hypocritical. But it quickly filled that concern with a quick list of spoon-fed and very unscientific reasons to make it valid. Like, there aren't that many stupid people to vote en masse for a fraud. You mean like someone that privately admitted to losing the election, have it adjudicated about 60 times in court, and then still push the narrative that it was stolen from him? That's the fraud that they can't see. I have lost virtually all faith in our electoral system with of how badly and how poorly things have been run with your voting machines, with, you know, Dominion voting. Those are hackable voting machines. It's been proven. That's horrifying. Fox is going to pay Dominion voting systems seven hundred eighty seven million five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Dominion's lawyer saying, quote, today represents a ringing endorsement for truth. And for democracy... So if Donald Trump were to win, would you accept those results? I would like to see a fair election. I, I, I'm not some person who's just going to, you know, blindly... If, if there were cheating on his side, I would have just as much... It's the fact that when you are confronted with all the evidence that 
yeah, you've had this entire <laughs> this entire system of going back and forth between you know, we stopped counting votes at this time and it, it all just seems very suspicious and I wish we had a stronger electoral system that allowed just for, you know, on the day voting that allowed you to just cast your ballot and it counted. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have. Because we won the state. It's telling how the drumbeat of election denialism is standard, but it's always missing the parts that show a fraudulent system. I still say he won the last time. He got more votes than he did before. And according to what I hear, obviously I'm not, I don't know all this, he had enough votes to win. I mean, in the middle of the night, Biden picks up a lot of votes. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, you know, as someone who was in Pennsylvania watching the count. Yeah, I mean, a lot of mail. There was an unprecedented number of mail-in ballots that year because of the pandemic. Well, how about the Trump tickets that they found in the ditch? I mean, there was a lot of stuff here and there. I'm sure, I don't know how big it was, but it was there. Yeah, 60 courts said, or 59 courts said, nah, uh, we looked into this, or we're not even going to look into it because there's not enough evidence. But if it happens well, this it time, you'll... what it is, brother. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Let's go back real quick to that live stage show that Tucker Carlson had where Roseanne Barr screamed until she forgot what she was screaming about next. These are the types of events that are determined to reinforce the views that we just heard from MAGA supporters that reel off evidence-free conspiracies because they get it fresh from these sources. The only thing they're good at is seizing the moral high ground and they try to make you ashamed of the best things about your life, like being married or having normal kids or not castrating your children or whatever, or knowing Alex Jones. They're like, oh, how can you know Alex Jones? And I'm sick of it. And I'm just gonna say that Alex Jones is my friend. There's nothing to be ashamed of there. I'm not ashamed and you shouldn't be either. They should be ashamed. He called 9-11 and they tried to put him in jail for it. So anyway, thank you. It just makes me laugh. Alex Jones, so controversial. Love God, love America, love freedom. Oh, you're so radical. <laughs> what, what? Yo, this is how people like Alex Jones are normalized and their images sanitized. He was busted for defamation over claiming the victims of Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting were crisis actors, which then led his followers to harass and threaten the grieving families that had lost children or relatives that worked at the school. But Tucker would rather claim that it had something to do with 9-11, which again, further erases the tragedy that took those innocent children's lives. I wonder why he didn't play this sworn deposition about the prophet that he calls Alex Jones. And I, you know, I myself, you know, almost had like a form of psychosis back in the past where I basically thought everything was staged. You know, I've now learned a lot of times things aren't staged. So, um, you know, I think as, as a pundit and someone giving opinion um, that, you know, my opinions have been wrong, but they were never wrong consciously to hurt people. You said false things about Sandy Hook because of the psychosis. Well, I'm going to say... Correct? Well, I'm just saying that the trauma of the media and the corporations lying so much, then everything begins, you don't trust anything anymore. Okay. Kind of like a child whose parents lie to them over and over again, well, pretty soon they don't know what, it, what, what reality is. So, so, so long before these lawsuits, I said that in the past, I thought everything was a conspiracy. And I would kind of get into that mass group think of the communities that were out there saying that. So now I see that it's more in the middle. Uh, and so that's where I stand. Self-described psychosis, but still a truth teller. Only MAGA will allow a guy to blatantly lie like this, watch him call his predictions psychosis, and then invite him back onto a stage to reclaim some kind of truth-telling mantle. Tucker Carlson calls him a prophet. MAGA likes to call Trump a disciple of God, which conveniently makes their existence rely on his campaign for self-serving power. If Donald Trump were to lose again, what would that mean for MAGA, do you think, for, this, for all the people here? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I think that the hope that we can ever be a great nation again and that my grandchildren can have the benefit of what I had as a young woman, I think that, that hope is gone.